All right, so that was Jordan Spieth talking about his collapse at the Masters last month, where he blew a five-shot lead with nine holes to go, including a disastrous quadruple bogey on par three, the 12th hole. Skip, in this media age, can an athlete come back from that type of collapse? <sighs> Stephen, I guess they, they can, but in Jordan Spieth's case, I'm starting to wonder, again, because of the media age we're in. I do want to compliment Jordan on the class and patience with which he has handled the constant interrogation about what happened on the 12th hole at Augusta National. It's probably driving him to distraction here, and I'm afraid he's going to be a little distracted as he tries to return to highly competitive play in the players this weekend, starting today. In fact, he's playing now. But the point is, I got to tell you, if I can just keep it in the golf realm for you, I have never, I, maybe, I, maybe I'm missing something in my memory, but Stephen A., I can't remember a great player, an all-time great golfer, a Tiger, a Nicholas, a Hogan, a Palmer, I could go on and on. I can't remember those great majors winners suffering a single hole collapse while in control of a major championship the way Jordan Spieth suddenly and shockingly did and it, it, again I got to remind everybody last year if we can go back a golf year Jordan Spieth was Tiger-esque he won the Masters and he won the US Open and he had a five-foot putt for par that he missed on 17 on the final round of the British or he just might have won that tournament and then he finished second in the PGA to Jason Day that's Tiger-esque but what happened on 12 was not. Now, we've seen the Greg Normans of the world, 96. It was slow death. We're slowly but surely starting on number one. He started losing his lead to Nick Faldo. It just happened. It, it, by, by the ninth hole, you just knew it was over for Greg Norman. Not like this. This is, as Molly pointed out, five up. This is Jordan Spieth at a, at a course that you'd think he just owned almost the way Tiger did because he, he was in contention, you remember, two years ago with Bubba Watson in the final twosome. And he's five up, and he goes bogey 10, bogey 11, and then takes a quadruple bogey out of nowhere. It's so bad. It's so shocking. It's so hard to recover from when you keep getting asked about it. No sport more than golf creates psychological demons, and they are going to be lurking in his subconscious from here on. And it probably won't be at the players, but as he continues to play major championships, trust me, those demons are going to start barking in the back of his head as he reaches some contention point or, or has a lead going into the back nine of whatever major it is. It's going to weigh on him because, in part, the media is never going to let it go away unless he starts winning another six, seven, eight majors and obliterates the memory, and I'm not sure he can. I'm not sure he can either, Skip. See, I think Jordan Spieth has the talent to overcome it. The fact that he birdied on the 13th he he and the 15th back. hole a good point. after the quadruple bogey yeah. on the 12th shows me. And then not only that, for the most part, he played well. He was, uh, he was, he was right behind Danny Willard. I mean, on the 16th yeah. hole, he was right there. Yeah. I mean, he was still back in contention. Coming back, he just couldn't close the gap, uh, you know, because, the, you know, obviously the quadruple bogey on 12th was a devastating blow. If it wasn't for that, he would have won the tournament as far as I'm concerned. But he still came back and bogey two of the next three, I mean, birdie yeah. two of the next three hole, which tells me something. The problem is this. Here's where the trepidation kicks in. If it was just about his talent, fine. If it was just about his talent overcoming those psychological demons, Fine. I believe in Jordan Spieth. The problem I think Jordan Spieth is going to have is that this moment will stay with him forever until he overcomes it. And it's not enough for him to just win a tournament in cruise control running away. When pressure mounts is when folks are going to be in his face. Yep. And I don't know if he's going to know how to deal with that. That's the, ch that's the challenge here, because if he doesn't know how to march on through that noise, 
that ultimately gets in his face and his ears, he can't win. You got to be able to know how to defeat that, not by running away from it, but by actually being confronted by it, but being numb to it. It doesn't affect you, and you still go on and do it. We don't know if Jordan Spieth has that capability yet. It's all nice, good, and dandy. You, you applauded him for the way he handles stuff. Well, first of all, it's protocol. It's tradition. You have to be the one to slide that green jacket on, okay? <laughs> so I'm not giving him any credit for that. What was he supposed to do, go home and refuse to do so? Yep. No, that's not proper etiquette in the sport of golf. We, we know this. The post-tournament interview that, you know, they didn't really ask him anything, but – then he goes away for, for a few weeks. Like, he classified it like an off-season. He was gone for four weeks. Well, I would like to think you're away that long. Once you come back and you get interviewed about it, uh, and of course you're prepared to answer questions. But you would think that it's going to end at some point, but it's not going to end. And it's going to be written about. It's going to be talked about. It's going to be debated. It's going to be speculated upon. Can he deal with that? Because like you said, no sport creates psychological demons more effectively than golf. Yep. And that's what he's going to have to deal with. I have no doubt that his talent can overcome it. His own personal poise as it pertains strictly to playing golf can overcome it. But he ain't never been in this position where he's got to be bombarded with the questions and he's got to absorb all the inquiry. And I don't know if he's built to deal with that element. I'm not I either. Really don't. And I remind you, Jordan, in his recent <clears throat> past, has fallen victim to responding on Twitter to his critics, being a little too thin-skinned. And I don't know off-camera how hard he's taking this. He's saying the right things on camera. And again, he's keeping that stiff upper lip, and I, I admire that. But it's, it's the Internet age we live in, unless you can tune it all out completely, it's going to stay with you because people won't let it go until you obliterate the memory of it with some great triumph overcoming it. And I, it's, it's just going to be tough on this. And he's still a kid, but it's going to be tough yes. on him. He's even yeah, through well, 10. Well, let's hope they remember he's a kid. Yep. Let's hope they remember he's a kid. Yep. Yep. And, All right. and side note, Spieth is even through 10 holes at the players. Moving on, one Colts coach is expecting big things from his star quarterback this season, but will it be good or bad luck for Indy in 2016? That is the discussion next. So the same week, the Las Vegas mayor says she is confident that the Raiders will relocate there. Cowboys owner and general manager Jerry Jones said at a sponsor's golf tournament that he wouldn't be opposed to a team moving to Vegas. Quote, it has a flair for entertainment and it has two million people and they're avid sports fans. The full time residents, they have a huge visiting contingent that more often than not are fans of some NFL football teams. You add all that together, and it's certainly in a conversation about the future relative to the NFL. One of my favorite quotes here, Jones calls Vegas one of the real crown jewels of communities in the United States, Skip Bayless. Mm. Do you agree with uh, your owner? Stephen A. Smith, when it comes to football decision-making, I've occasionally questioned my man Jerry Jones. You have often questioned my man Jerry Jones. When it comes to dollars and cents decision-making, I never question Jerry Jones. When it comes to marketing or business, long-term business vision, I believe Jerry Jones has some genius about him. He has a great eye for what will work in the future. He was a driving force in getting the Rams back to Los Angeles. And now I think he will become a driving force in getting a team to Las Vegas. And when Jerry speaks on these issues, I, for one, listen. I spent a lot of time around Jerry. He was a big part of three books that I wrote on the Dallas Cowboys. I spent hundreds of hours around him and interviewing him. And I believe in his business vision. I, I believe in Las Vegas now as an NFL destination in ways I never did before. Obviously, uh, casino gambling, internet gambling is now widespread in this country. And the, the stigma of Las Vegas gambling is starting to diminish, or as Roger Goodell said recently on Mike and Mike, the, the, the NFL has softened its stance on gambling as it relates to a team in Las Vegas. Once upon a time, the fear was that players would be susceptible perhaps to game fixing, more susceptible with the, the mob ties in Vegas back in the day. 
But you know and I know Las Vegas has changed dramatically. It has gone from Sin City, you know, maybe going back 20, 30, 40 years ago and, and past, to now, dare I say, it's almost Disney-esque in its family appeal. That, that there's not so much of this what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. There, there's more of a family atmosphere now around the casinos that would appeal a little bit more to an NFL situation, a, an NFL team. My one concern here is what Molly brought up as she set this up. Jerry's talking about 2,000, I'm sorry, 2 million people. I'm, I'm not sure that's enough to sustain a passionate fandom for an NFL team a lot of people would come and go who would be fans of other teams and they would buy tickets to see their team play in Las Vegas. I, I'm not sure there's that core of hardcore fans that, that, would, that would make these games an, an obvious sellout. I, but if Jerry says so, I'm listening to Jerry. In this particular instance, I do as well. Uh, from a marketing standpoint, obviously, he's not to be questioned. He's hype machine personified. The one thing that he knows how to do is generate a buzz, and he knows how to make money. Um, he doesn't know how to win. Uh, I, let me take that back. He does know how to win. He just forgot over the last 20 years. But that's a different subject for another day. What I would say to you is this. 2.1 million residents in Las Vegas, over 42 million visitors to Las Vegas each year. And Jerry's right. Folks, obviously, are sports fans. Uh, would I be concerned about gambling? Certainly, I still would. Would I be concerned about the imagery of the NFL because they're so tightwad about everything now, uh, considering you know any bit of negative publicity is something that they believe compromises the shield? I do believe that you're inviting trouble. So you got to ask yourself, is it worth it? And that's where I'm a little bit torn. Would I do it, Skip? Chances are I would. But that's because I'm a chance taker. Whereas in the case of the National Football League, even though they proclaim themselves to be one as well, the fact is that they would be a bit reticent on so many levels because of the potential problems. And you would ask yourself, do you really need to do this? You needed a team in Los Angeles. You needed a team in the second largest market in the United States of America. You don't necessarily need a team in Las Vegas. You don't necessarily need that. So you got to ask yourself, weigh the risk, the reward. Would I do it? Sure, I would. Because I think there's money to be made. I think the fact that you got Sin City, which clearly has tremendous buzz, it would help to elevate the profile of the NFL even more so than it already is. Not to mention the fact that with, with fantasy sports leagues and beyond, uh, the reality is, is that whether the NFL likes it or not, it's associated with that stuff in ways it never was in the past anyway now. So when you take that into consideration, it's worth the risk. I wouldn't hesitate to do it, but I do understand the reticence on part of some people who may feel that way. You also have to take into account that no yeah. owner was closer to the late great Al Davis than Jerry Jones was. Al took him under, took Jerry under his wing early on, taught him much of what he knows about running an NFL team. And now that Al's son is not only running the Raiders, but wants to move the Raiders to Las Vegas, it's possible Jerry is trying to help the son gain a little momentum to get the team in Las Vegas. So it's not like yeah. you would put an expansion team there. He's actually talking about the Raiders moving to Las Vegas, I think. Yes, he is. Yeah. Yes, he is. He offered to put up $500 million um, <clears throat> of his own money. Uh, there's $150 million they can get from additional investors, and then the rest will come from tourist taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but, you know, to build a 65,000-seat stadium. Uh, so, you know, again, if they're able to pull that off, should it be something that the NFL strongly considers? Absolutely, because there's a few teams in the league that I would question, do they need to have an NFL team? Mm -hmm. Yep, I would agree. Their respective cities. I think that Las Vegas could do a far better job in promoting the NFL brand yep. and, 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 and bringing quality football to that area that it would benefit the league far more to have a team in Vegas than yep. it would in at least three or four cities that, the, that already have NFL teams. No, I got it, but it would hurt my heart to see the Raiders leave Oakland, yeah. California. Yeah, I don't want them to leave Oakland. Yeah. The Oakland should have a football team. Yeah. Oakland should have a football team.
I think you could argue, too, it could help the sport internationally, potentially, too, because all Good. the international tourists. Interesting. NHL also eyeing Vegas, but that's for an expansion team. Up next, Jordan Spieth, his collapse, one of the most memorable at Augusta in sports history. So could any athlete right the ship after collapsing in that grand fashion on that stage? Find out next.